Multiple new studies find that being inactive makes fat loss or weight loss almost impossible. It's known as exercise resistance. And I'm going to explain that shortly. This concept is a little bit hard to grasp initially, but after we share these images from multiple recently published studies, I think you'll grasp this concept and you will now be focusing on staying active throughout the day and trying to walk at least 8,000 steps per day. Because if you don't, not only Will that increase your risk of dying from all causes? But that will reduce your ability to burn fat when you actually engage in recreational exercise, like going to the gym or doing CrossFit or going for a hike or going for a run. Translation, if you're sedentary, it's hard to burn fat during exercise. And this is known as exercise resistance. And so let's dive into this. This is a fascinating paper by a gentleman known as Edward Coyle over at UT Austin. The title of this review is Physical Inactivity Causes Exercise Resistance of Fat Metabolism, Harbinger or Culprit of Disease. And there's a beautiful abstract here looking at individuals who are sedentary and talking about how this causes the inability to properly oxidize fat during exercise. But what happens is as we increase our baseline physical activity levels by walking periodically, maybe a 10 minute walk after each meal or getting up every hour and doing like just five push-ups, these little activities, these so-called exercise snacks interspersed throughout the day enhance our body's ability to actually oxidize fats for fuel after we eat food as well as after we exercise. And I think this is really important. I can't tell you how many clients I've worked with since 2006 that say, hey, look, I go to the gym three to four days per week and I'm gaining weight. I don't know what's going on. Most of these people either are truck drivers where they're very sedentary. They have desk jobs, office managers, CEOs. They travel a lot, a lot of sitting. And so it's very important that we acknowledge that just walking about 8,000 steps per day will help to ameliorate this so-called exercise resistance from being sedentary. So the investigators say physical inactivity is the fourth leading cause of death in the world. You know, I still see, I was on an airplane yesterday, uh, about 10% of the people were wearing face masks on the airplane. Uh, some of them, I'm not kidding you, and I'm not trying to judge, judge these people. Maybe they have rare immune issues or whatever. People are still double masking. But you can just look at their bodies. I can tell they do not exercise. And I'm not trying to be fat shaming, but you can just look at them and they don't exercise. So if we're so scared about a virus that has the infectious fatality ratio less than the flu, why aren't we focusing on exercise knowing it's the fourth leading cause of death throughout the world? The investigators say it is associated with a myriad of different diseases and premature death. Two possible contributing factors are postprandial lipidemia, which we're going to talk about shortly. Essentially, what that means is in the post meal window, the triglyceride levels become supraphysiologic. And in so doing, they cause damage, the triglycerides, that is, cause damage systemically to the heart, to the muscle, to the liver, and uh, initiate this snowball effect leading to poor metabolic health. And as the investigators say, the Postprandial lipidemia causes atherosclerosis as well as impaired whole body fat oxidation, which contribute to obesity. And that's how we introduce this video. They go on to say acute exercise in physically active people is effective for increasing whole body fat oxidation and lowering postprandial lipidemia the next morning. However, in people who have low physical activity, i.e. less than 8,000 steps per day, an acute bout of exercise has no effect, that is, Again, I want to say that in people who have low physical activity, who walk less than 8,000 steps per day, a one hour exercise session has no effect of increasing fat oxidation or reducing postprandial lipidemia. And this is known as exercise resistance. The acute harms of inactivity are not due to the lack of exercise and are more powerful than the benefits of exercise, they say, at least regarding to fat metabolism. The increase in mortality and reduced daily step counts is remarkably steep. Low background steps per day also impair the metabolic adaptations to short-term exercise. And so here's the model that Coyle et al. have created to prove this hypothesis. So essentially, they have three days of relatively low steps in one group and then have three days of higher steps, more than 8,000 steps. I think they had like people walk 4,000 steps for three days and then walk over more than 8,000 steps for three days. And at the end of the third day, they had these individuals do a one hour bout of exercise at 62% of their VO2 max. The next morning, they had a milkshake that was high in fats, carbohydrates, and protein. And they wanted to look at post-meal fat oxidation 
and triglycerides to look at the postprandial lipidemia that I mentioned. And again, that is the post-meal rise in triglycerides, which we've talked about, the lipid load test, we'll get into that a little bit later. And what they found is that that one hour bout of exercise didn't do anything to suppress the post-meal rise in triglycerides or increase fat oxidation in people who walked less than 4,000 steps per day. But that one hour bout of exercise after three days of walking more than 8,000 steps per day increased fat oxidation and reduced the post-meal level of triglycerides. So general take home here is that we should be walking on pretty much every day at least 8,000 steps per day. And as someone who travels a lot for business, for work, uh, I will tell you that this is totally possible. Yesterday, I was sitting a lot of the day, but I baked in exercise snacks. Um, I was with Mark Bell. We did some uh, podcasting and things like that. And uh, after we filmed a two-hour session, we went outside and did some farmer's carries, uh, had the sled. We did some lunges, did some push-ups, got on the concept too, and then went back and, and did some recording, went to the airport, did a lot of walking. I was able to clock in 10,000 steps, and I didn't go really to the gym or do any structured things. So I think it's important that this is achievable for all of you to do. That's what I'm trying to say here. And it's going to help you. We're going to talk about mortality statistics shortly, but also I think most importantly, improve fat oxidation and prevent age-related fat gain. Now, I just want to pause and say, I appreciate you viewing this content. We're going to get, dive into some excellent studies shortly. If you're enjoying the content, hit that like button. Let me know what you think of this video in the comment section below. And because we're talking about exercise, it's important that you understand the benefits of creatine. This is arguably one of the most safe and widely used and effective ergogenic aids. Creatine is naturally found in food, but a lot of people are not getting enough of it. When you pair creatine with exercise, you can improve your sports performance, your recovery, and your strength, as well as cellular hydration. And so at Myoscience, we have paired creatine monohydrate, the Creapure creatine, which is the only creatine that's not made in China. It's highly purified, along with electrolytes like sodium, potassium, and real ancient sea salt together because it turns out that electrolytes help with the absorption of creatine so you can maximize the return on your exercise investment if you train with the novel electrolyte sticks by Myoscience, the creatine-containing electrolyte sticks. There's over 800 reviews over at myoscience.com. Here's one review from Matt S. just yesterday. He says, I enjoy using these electrolyte packs knowing they contain more than just trace amounts of the minerals. I need to support my activities. So you can see some of the other reviews by going to myoscience.com and checking out the electrolyte six, which I will link below and saving using the code podcast at checkout. So let's talk about ways to overcome exercise resistance and talk about why you should be walking at least 8,000 steps per day. So let's get back to table one from the paper that we've been talking about here. What you see is low step counts versus high step counts and the changes in fat oxidation after exercise. So the resting fat oxidation increases 19% after the same exercise bout only in people who are having a high step count. And in this particular analysis, it was 16,000 steps per day, which is on the higher end that most people will be able to achieve. But if you compare and contrast that to the low step count group, which was just 4,800 steps per day, which I think most people should at least aim for 6,000 steps on the low end, uh, the resting fat oxidation differences here were you know, 13%. And so this is a pretty statistically significant difference. And you can see here, there's a little asterisk uh, indicating that this was uh, a p-value of 0 0.005, meaning that if you were to reproduce this a thousand times, uh, 995 times, you would get this same result. So it's very statistically significant, which is important. You also see a reduction in plasma triglycerides uh, following the lipid load test or high fat tolerance test. You see a reduction in triglycerides of 27% in the high step count group compared to the low step count group. Uh, you also see changes and reductions in heart rate. You see uh, changes in perceived exertion. The high step count group has a lower perceived exertion. And I think this is really important. You know, people that are very sedentary, they go to the gym and they're just exhausted. Like, oh my gosh, I can barely do this. But when you're more recreational, active and just move throughout the day, uh, improving the so-called NEAT, non-exercise associated thermogenesis, just moving throughout the day, just walking, um, you know, being active, you start to see all these different uh, changes, including reductions in blood lactate. And so a lot of people notice one of the inhibitors of exercise is the buildup of lactic acid. It creates that burning sensation in your lungs and in your muscles when you're doing high intensity explosive work. There was a 11% reduction in lactate buildup in the high 
step count group versus the low step count group. And essentially what this is hinting at is the more background steps you have per day, the more responsive your body is to exercise, to structured exercise specifically. So you're going to get a better return on your exercise investment if you have more steps per day. Uh, but let's look here at figure four. And this is the relationship between levels of physical activity and uh, fat oxidation, as well as post-meal plasma triglyceride levels. And what you can see here is essentially, this is another way of depicting graphically what we just talked about. The increase in fat oxidation in individuals who have a normal step count of 8,400 steps per day versus a low step count after exercise. And you see here the fat oxidation, which is kilocals over the course of 16 hours. For those of you listening, you might just you know, note these figures. And I think the graph really tells the whole story in the video. Uh, you have 325 in the low step count group versus close to 400 in the high step count group. So a pretty significant difference here, about 25%. And similarly, if you look at the, the post-meal triglyceride levels, you see a massive difference after a lipid load test comparing the high step count versus the low step count. So I think it's really important to acknowledge, and this is really where we're going to drive this point home, looking at all-cause mortality. So it's one thing to talk about fat loss and the theoretic benefits of improving your metabolic health. It's another thing to think about not dying prematurely. And this is where this study by Bannock et al. in 2023 and we've shared this and talked about this numerous times, but this was um, repurposed in this particular analysis. And I think it's important for you all to see this. The sweet spot in terms of the number of daily steps we all should be tr striving to achieve per day and its associations with reduced chances of all-cause mortality or dying from all causes happens to be around 8,600 steps per day. Now, it does turn out more is actually better in this case. And this is for individuals over and under the age of 65. And so death from all causes, as well as cardiovascular specific mortality can be reduced if we walk more than 8,600 steps per day. And I think this is just incredibly interesting and we have tons of data here. So in conclusion, it turns out that low daily step counts are linked with impaired fat oxidation and increased odds of developing atherosclerosis. So the investigators say inactivity not only causes exercise resistance and impaired fat metabolism, but possibly augmented development of atherosclerosis. As discussed above and below, inactivity greatly impairs muscle metabolism. And again, this is why we see in high daily step count individuals around 16,000 steps per day in comparison to just 4,000 steps per day, we see reduced blood lactate, we see reduced blood pressure, uh, an improved exercise economy, improved fat oxidation, and reduced perceived exertion. So exercise just seems a little bit more enjoyable for people who walk more because we're helping to send signals to the skeletal muscle that we should be ready and receptive to exercise. And it turns out that this extends also to brain health. And I think this is, this is just important for us to recognize. We all want to function better uh, cognitively throughout life, whether we're parents, whether we're business owners uh, in our relationships, we all want to have better brain health. It turns out that people who sit longer than 10 hours per day have increased incidence of dementia. And so we're not getting blood flow to the brain or metabolic health of the brain is not optimal because we're sitting so much. And so I think that's important because like fat metabolism, the effects of inactivity on dementia are not countered by exercise. I, again, this is important. And these investigators are not saying exercise is not helpful, but if we don't have the background 8,000 steps or more per day, exercise is not as beneficial. It's not powerful enough to overcome the inactivity. That's what I think is important. They say in both the muscle and the brain, the unhealthy effects of inactivity seem to be more powerful than the suppressed effects of exercise that are normally beneficial. Again, being sedentary causes exercise resistance, impairing fat oxidation and impairing your ability to properly metabolize the food that you eat in the post meal window. They say this observation that muscle and brain appear to be impaired progressively with inactivity and without rescue via exercise suggests inactivity might produce agents that target multiple organ systems, the brain, the heart, the fat tissue, the liver. This suggests that recommendations regarding exercise and or activity for overall health should minimize sitting and inactivity lengths while also including a minimal level of background activity, more than 8,000 steps per day. So that's the take home here. You still need to go to the gym, do structured physical uh, exercise. I'm a huge proponent of resistance training, but for you, it could, could be yoga, it could be hiking, jujitsu, whatever your thing is, you need to be active, you know, four to five days per week. And then also 
aim for at least 8,000 steps per day. Uh, take these exercise snacks every 90 minutes. Get up and move. Walk to your car, you know, if you're at an office uh, building. Take your dogs on a walk if you work from home. If you're on an airplane, walk and go to the bathroom. Take the stairs instead of the escalator. These are small little things that we all can be doing, and it turns out it will make our exercise sessions more efficient. It will help us in the post meal window reduce the process of atherosclerosis and will help us lose body fat and maintain healthy lean physiques throughout our lifespan. And as we just talked about, it will improve the health of your brain and reduce the odds of developing dementia. So hopefully you enjoyed this content, my friends. I would love to know what you think in the comment section below. Please hit that like button, share this video with a friend if you enjoyed it, and we'll catch you in a future episode down the road.